Hi, uh, this is Masu Nim, who is a research scientist at the Korea Institute of Science and Technology, or KIS, the biggest national lab of South Korea. I'm a professor at the Korean National University of Science and Technology, and also I have adjunct faculty position at the uh, Gyeonggi University. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce my artificial vision researches as a good example of challenging researches which aim to address social problems. In particular, uh, it is my tremendous honor to talk in this opportunity, which is in front of the gifted students like you. It is because I'm a beneficiary of the National Gifted Education System as a graduate of Gyeonggi Science High School, which is the very first science high school system of the Korea. I would like to emphasize that incredible amounts of societal supports have been made in your education and will be provided in your future career. This means that you would have some kind of obligation to pay back to your society. I hope that you could take your social responsibility uh, seriously. So these are some examples of the, uh, the educations I received in my past career. And also I was a, a faculty at the Henry Ford Health System in the uh, United States. And also currently I'm working at the Korea Institute of Science and Technology as a researcher. So uh, in order to make our researches, I got uh, a lot of funds from the National Research Foundation of Korea. So I'd like to contribute uh, to the society with my expertise. For example, uh, in our country alone, uh, one out of every 200 Korean is known to be visually impaired. The number of blind individuals around the world is bigger than Canadian population. And among those above uh, over 8 million people are identified to suffer from incurable blindness, including age-related macular degeneration and retinitis pigmentosa. As you may imagine, vision loss can be devastating, often significantly affecting one's quality of life, including independence. It is because vision accounts for around three quarters of all sensory information. Also, our brain allocates a substantial portion to processing visual information. Due to this significant role of vision, there have been numerous attempts to restore sight. In the year of 1755, a French physician has made the very first attempt to artificial uh, vision. He applied an electrical shock to the blind patient with this interesting gadget. In the human history, it was the very first use of the uh, electricity to modulate the human physiological function. Artificial vision can be created by stimulating any of these four visual centers. Each of them has its own unique anatomical and functional features. Among those, we target the retina where, the, where begins the vision and which is also known as the approachable part of the brain. The retina is located at the back of the eye and in the retina, uh, rather than cones, which are photoreceptors collectively, they convert the light into electrochemical signals. And then bipolar cells and ganglion cells process those neural signals uh, further to send those informations to the brain. However, other retina degenerative diseases, such as retinitis pigmentosa or age-related macular degeneration, they are known to primarily destroy light-sensing photoreceptor cells. And several microelectronics retina implants have been developed to electrically stimulate the retina neurons that survive retina degenerative diseases. However, the performance of those commercialized products is still far away from the normal vision. The aforementioned commercialized retina implant have been implanted to more than 500 subjects around the world, including six Korean patients. However, no one has made independent navigation without other help or assistive devices like this cane. The best visual equity recorded so far is uh, 0.043 or 2460. It could be estimated as 4% of approximately 4% of normal vision, which is still far away from practically useful vision. So in order to um, make successful retina implant, there are several issues to be addressed. For example, we have to improve spatial resolution by confining the electrical stimulation in a smaller area. And also we need to uh, duplicate the physiological neural activity uh, as close as possible. And also uh, we need to be able to uh, selectively activate 
uh, certain types of uh, neurons uh, in order to mimic exclusive firing of those uh, cell types in the retina. And lastly, uh, we need to systematically understand how those neural signals are altered by the retina degeneration. In my lab, uh, we are studying the artificial vision uh, by uh, applying several techniques to study multi-scale uh, researches from single cell, uh, single ion channel level to all the way to the animal behavior level. Let me briefly introduce uh, ongoing multidisciplinary researches in my lab. First, uh, we are doing neurophysiological studies. The eventual goal of our neurophysiological studies is to replicate natural neural activity. The retina itself is a kind of transducer which converts the visual information to uh, neural information. The retina ganglion cells, which are the output neurons of the retina, they generate a series of spikes which is called as a, a spike train. And these are the neural code or the languages of the uh, retina ganglion cells are speaking to the brain. So when we uh, implant the microelectrode array on top of the retina, if we are not able to generate um, very close natural uh, neural activities, the brain may not be able to understand what these new informations are meaning. So eventually, uh, we need to duplicate these uh, neural signals uh, in the single cell level. In order to record the spiking activities from single uh, retinal ganglion cells, uh, we custom built the multi electrode array system with the digital micrometer device protector. So when we shine the, any visual stimuli pattern to the mouse retina, uh, we were able to uh, record single spikes from those retina ganglion cells, and then we analyze those spiking activities. One of the research topics in my lab is to quantify the artificial neural information. So in order to uh, estimate the quality of the artificial visual percepts, uh, we compute the neural information amount from their spiking pattern. So in order to increase uh, the neural information amount, uh, we will be doing some uh, op optimization of the stimulation parameters. So from the recorded spiking activities, uh, we can compute the neural information amount by computing photoentropy or uh, noise entropy. And then later, uh, we can estimate how much information is flowed from the retina to the uh, visual cortex, the visual center of our brain. In order to duplicate the net natural neural activities very closely, uh, we need to better understand the fundamental uh, characteristics of the single ion channels and receptors in the retina. So we are doing some fundamental uh, visual neuroscience studies. Another ongoing multidisciplinary research would be uh, fabrication of the three-dimensional microelectrode arrays using semiconductor fabrication processes. So this is the SEM images or uh, scan electron microscope images of fabricated three-dimensional microneedle electrode arrays uh, in my lab. Uh, we are planning to implant this three-dimensional microelectrode array uh, on top of the retina to stimulate the, those retinal ganglion cells and other types of retinal neurons to create uh, artificial vision. And also, uh, we are doing some machine learning studies or uh, image processing studies. This is an example of what we are doing with the image processing techniques. So when we are uh, processing the outer images uh, captured by the camera and then convert those images into an array of bright dots, so-called phosphines, like this. So uh, in order to estimate how these artificial vision uh, would be helpful in the blind individual, we are using head mount displays or uh, monitors to simulate those artificial vision. And lastly, uh, we are doing some behavior studies with the research animals. In the past, we have done a lot of animal behavior testing with uh, mice, usually. However, in the future, we are planning to apply our technologies in non-human primates like uh, monkeys, uh, because it is very critical step for uh, clinical human trials. In the hum human, uh, we have the macular, which is the central uh, high visual acuity part of the retina. However, in the mouse or rats, they do not have macular structure in their retina. Non-human primates, they do have 
macular structures like human retina. So nowadays we are getting uh, monkey eyeballs from our collaborators. As I introduced in the previous slides, uh, we are doing uh, a lot of multidisciplinary researches in my lab. And uh, those multidisciplinary researches cannot be done in a single lab. So we are doing a lot of collaborations with other uh, experts. So for successful artificial vision researches, uh, we need expertise like uh, electrical circuits and microsystems. And also we need to fabricate uh, those micro and nano devices with the biomaterials. And also those devices should be uh, implanted in the human as well as research animals. And also we need to do in vivo experiments. And also later, uh, we need to do some electrophysiological studies as well as computational neuroscience techniques uh, for better understand how these uh, artificially created neural informations can make uh, useful artificial vision. And at the high level, uh, those artificially created neural signals uh, should be well perceived by the human subject. It's uh, in the field of the cognitive neuroscience. And all of these uh, different uh, disciplines, they are supposed to be collaborating each other. So uh, definitely we need to do some uh, multidisciplinary collaborations with the new perspective from uh, the other disciplines. So in order to make this uh, multidisciplinary collaboration more effective, uh, I created a Korean Artificial Vision Society. So I invited a lot of the researchers in different fields like uh, neurophysiology, microfabrication, and circuits and systems, uh, all the way to the uh, cognitive psychology and ophthalmology. And uh, we are getting together every month and listen to a seminar which I uh, organized. And it has uh, more than 450 people registered from uh, 35 different institutes uh, around the world. I anticipate that uh, many of you guys are going to be uh, uh, good researchers, scientists, or engineers. And let me give you some tips uh, for your future careers. The first one is the teamwork. As I demonstrated in the previous slides, uh, a lot of researches nowadays are multidisciplinary. So you need uh, collaboration with other uh, experts. Please do not isolate yourself. You cannot do anything alone these days. And absolutely, you need to have your domain knowledge and skill sets for uh, effective collaboration with other uh, experts. So please try to be best in your specific field of research. And also, uh, in order to make this uh, team collaborations, you guys need to have effective or clear uh, communication skills. And communication skills is remarkably important nowadays because uh, recent studies are very, very uh, multidisciplinary and requiring very close collaborations again with other experts. Lastly, good attitude is preferred. It is always good to be very confident and proactive. However, try to be humble as possible. It has been uh, widely accepted that the, the best bosses or leaders are very humble. Let me acknowledge past lab members for successful researches in my lab. And also I would like to acknowledge my previous mentor, uh, Professor Shelley Fried and other uh, previous uh, postdocs. And these are, uh, this, these are the current lab members, and I really appreciate their hard work. And also, we are getting uh, a lot of research funding from National Research Foundation of Korea, as well as uh, Korea Institute of Science and Technology. Thank you for your kind attention. Please email me if you have any questions. Then I will be uh, more than happy to answer to your question. And also, you may be interested in uh, browsing my uh, lab webpage. Thank you.